Hello, Minister. Um, I have two questions for you. Question one, first question is for public safety and rising crime. We have seen in Ontario that's a major concern for Ontarians uh, for the public safety and rising crime every day, every month, and it's, it's ongoing. Seems that our police forces, they don't have enough budget, they don't have enough resources to tackle this unstoppable crime. If we talk about Peel Regional Police, and we have a wish list of Peel Police Chief, Chief Nish Duryapa, that they need 250 police officers right now. They need 30 civilian staff in 911 call center because police has to choose which call they have to attend and which they have to miss. And every single call is an important call in terms of emergency. So do you have any allocated budget, more budget for the police uh, forces so that they can tackle this uh, rising crime in, in Ontario? Yeah, thank you, Nitin. And it was nice to see you at Diwali at Queen's Park. So uh, thank, thank you, you again. Same here. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, look, I think one of the, I talked about the Canadian dream and many people, whether you are a newcomer to Canada or whether you've been here for a long time, families want to feel safe. And I think that's your main point. Are we giving the resources to give our enforcement enough tools and funding to make families safe? And, and that is our top priority because everyone deserves, you know, a safety and a feeling of safety in their community and, and in their home. I'll just uh, talk to you about a couple things that uh, we've, we've continued to fund. One is the 267 million. So that's over a quarter billion dollars uh, to the police through our community and safety police grant. That's a quarter billion on top of the funding that we give them for, for resources, uh, for, for, for hiring people. We've also put in over $200 million to combat guns and gangs, because as you know, that's, that's, that's in our, many of our communities, that's, that's a challenge. And we've put in just over $61 million in new technology uh, that will allow peace to identify, police to identify stolen cars faster, because that's another challenge that we're facing. So, um, you know, as you know, we give the funding to the municipalities, they make the hiring decisions and the staffing decisions, that's at the municipal level, and they decide how to spend their budget. But we've been very supportive of making sure that we deliver more funds and, and, and uh, the uh, capital to be able to keep our family safe. Mr. My next question is uh, uh, in terms of the economic uh, downturn. So how can Ontario prepare for economic downturn and what lessons have we learned from other jurisdictions? Great question, Nit. And uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, what's important, I've been in this business a long time and, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of ups and downs in the economic cycle. And I think I think a couple of, of uh, lessons learned over, over the 40, almost 40 years that I've been in business. And one is that you have to prepare uh, for possible outcomes, various scenarios. So do I know if it's going to be a, a big uh, downturn or a small downturn? I don't know, but I, I know that you have to be prepared and prudent and have a plan. And that's why our, our fall economic statement highlights our, our plan uh, to deal with other economic uncertainties out there. What does that mean? We are making the critical investments in infrastructure. Now we got to keep investing in schools and building hospitals and long-term care and housing uh, because that's part of an economic plan. And then we have to have the contingencies in place to be able to fund unforeseen circumstances. And that's why I built in some prudence and capacity in our fiscal plan. So those are some of the, the lessons I've learned over many years and made sure that we have it in place for Ontario. Uh, we do have a lot of public sector and private sector unions. We have a lot of people that uh, do jobs that uh, don't have a union and make fair wages and, and keep this economy going. So we're responsible to all workers in, in Ontario. With regard to the Green Belt, I assume you're talking about Bill 39. Uh, we're adding 9,400 acres to the Green Belt. 9,400 acres to the Green Belt. Uh, we are developing 7,400 uh, acres that are on the Green Belt. But most of these areas, many have been serviced already. Uh, they are uh, lands that are contiguous to urban settings. They are close to very populous, uh, populated settings. And they are on the outer skirt of the green belt. So we're adding more than we're taking out. But let me remind you, we have a housing crisis. And I, I, I'll tell you a personal story. You know, when my parents emigrated from Hungary as refugees, my mother lived with her brother, her parents, and three grandparents, and they all lived under one roof. 
And, you know, think, I think about not having a, an ability to have an affordable house, affordable rent, uh, or, or just the dream of a home ownership for the many hundreds of thousands of new Canadians like my parents uh, had, uh, then we wouldn't be doing our job. So we have to, we have to get uh, housing built. And by the way, we get about 200,000 people, new Canadians coming to Ontario every year. And the federal government is up their target to 500,000. And we typically get 60%. So we got to be prepared for up to 300,000 people in 2025 starting to come to this country. And so we have to, we have to get some built. Some, some will go straight up and, and some will have to be uh, front door and back door homes uh, so that uh, all Canadians can participate in the Canadian dream.